So we've got the old 861 down to bare bones here. We've cleaned it, we pressure washed it good, we degreased it as best as we could. We used several different products, brake cleaner, degreaser, some solvent. And the hard thing is just kind of getting the thing to quit leaking long enough to get it painted. But I think we're about to that point. We'll be spraying some paint today on this thing. We kind of went over this thing lightly and sandblasted the majority of the flaky material off. I certainly would not call this a full restoration. The, the owner just wants it cleaned up and, and his exact words were, I just want it to look better than it did. So there's as many lessons in this for what not to do as there are what to do. But we sandblasted off the heavy material and we came back over this with a product called Rust Encapsulator made by Eastwood. They advertise it to destroy rust. I've used it a number of times. I don't know if I'm willing to say that it will completely destroy it, but the black stuff you see there is the rust encapsulator. And I went back over it just lightly with some 320 to kind of knock the texture off of it. We, yesterday, actually, we started to put some paint over that encapsulator and I neglected the dry time on the encapsulator. It's actually six to eight hours. And I just thought it was an hour like other epoxy primers. So when we did that, our enamel actually started to kind of react with that and bubble just a little bit. So we, we hit the brakes and, and stopped, let our enamel dry, came back out today, uh, went over that with a DA sander and some 320 and got her smoothed back out. So now we're ready to go ahead and continue. After we sand it down with the 320, we're gonna go ahead and make a quick wipe over it with some wax and grease remover, just to make sure we get the surfaces good and clean again as we can before we hit it with this next round of enamel. While well, I wipe this down and Raleigh gets ready to lay some paint down, I'll give you a brief overview on the 801 series Ford tractor. Around 1957, Ford realized that they were going to have to join the horsepower wars being waged by the likes of John Deere and Farmall. In order to gain market share, Ford was going to have to get on board and start making some tractors with just a little more oomph behind them. Enter the 801 series. The 801 and subsequent 901 tractors boasted a flashy new paint scheme comprised of gray fenders and hood with a bright red stripe down the center and red chassis. The new 861 offered a choice between three engines, the 2.8 liter four-cylinder gas, the 2.8 liter four-cylinder LP gas, and the 2.8 liter four-cylinder diesel. The workhorse of the lineup was the diesel. It boasted 56.3 horsepower and a whopping 140.4 foot-pounds of torque. This yielded an advertised drawbar horsepower rating of 44 at an operating weight of 3,500 pounds. The 861 featured a five-speed unsynchronized gear transmission and a live 540 RPM PTO. This recipe gave Ford the traction it needed to remain a healthy competitor in an era of constantly evolving farm tractors. The 861 would remain in production from 1958 to 1962. Okay, we got uh, this thing turned very red. And I think the term liquid overhaul definitely applies here. But again, that's what he wanted. So that's what we did. Time to let this thing dry a minute and then go to putting her back together. Well, we realized the nose cone is supposed to be red, so we're in the process of turning that from gray to red. Luckily, we caught it before we got everything put back together. We decided to go ahead and replace the front hood emblem. Picked this up from Steiner Tractor Parts. Seems to be good quality, it's got some weight to it. This is metal, this is, appears to be plastic, but it seems like a good piece. They're not cheap, I think this was 85 bucks. So we'll see if we can get this old one popped off, get the new one stuck on there. There's not much that holds them on, just these two tabs and these little metal retainer plates. It doesn't quite fit as well as the original, but this could be, could have been bent at some point. Looks nice though. That'll work. Well, 
We also picked up these graphics from Steiner, and they are what I believe to be the period correct decal for the 861 diesel tractor. Some of them did say diesel down here. I couldn't find that diesel lettering. And then some of them, I'll put a picture, the earlier pre-60 models, according to my research, might have just said 861 diesel as opposed to the Power Master. I dug into that a bit, and feel free to add your comments, but the best I could find was that this was the correct decal, so we're going to go with it. And so I just put a strip of tape down here along the body line to give me a, something to go by here to keep my lettering as straight as I could. So it's good. Also from Steiner Tractor Parts, we went ahead and sprung for a new steering wheel. It's a nice piece, helps clean up the, the overall look of the tractor. And I think it was $47 there at Steiner. I saw some that were a lot more. I saw some that were a little less, but. Starting to come together. Let's get this thing out in the sun and see what she looks like. Turned out pretty nice, really. Granted, you could go further in certain areas, but you know, as far as keeping costs down and just doing a good solid semi restoration on one, I think we pulled that off. I think this should make a great tractor for years to come. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe it helped you. Please feel free to comment. Keep the discussion going down below on these old tractors. They're pretty neat. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Catch me on whatever I'm working on next. Thanks.